Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please check the link in the description or click the join button below for more details. My name is Sava, and today we're discussing yet another portfolio optimization technique, which is the modified Sharpe ratio that uses the modified VER developed and suggested by Favre and Galliano, and we'll also use it to optimize portfolio allocations. Our favorite toy data set is six asset classes, stocks, bonds, gold, real estate, over the course of five years with daily data and daily returns of individual asset classes already calculated. So now we can kickstart our calculations with a simple equally weighted portfolio and see whether we can optimize starting from it. So one of the six in each of the six asset classes, calculate the sum of weights and check that it's indeed equal to 100%. That would be one of the constraints of our optimizer. But before that, most importantly, we'll calculate the simulated returns for the portfolio, multiplying the daily returns of the asset classes onto the respective weights with rows locked in case of weights and applying it throughout. Now we can calculate our daily geometric return for our modified VR calculations. So geo mean of one plus portfolio returns minus one, giving us four basis points approximately. Daily volatility, again, that will go into the modified VR formula after we calculate the modified VRZ stat. Our sigma is 0.7%. And for modified VR, as it takes into account uh, further higher moments of the empirical return distributions, namely skewness and catasis, we have to calculate those as well using the skew function for skewness and the curd function for curtises. And we can verify that our portfolio has negative skewness and positive curtises, which is a very common feature in financial time series. And that um, makes our portfolio return distribution fair tailed and left skewed, which is a nightmare for someone who wishes to calculate the true VR. As the left tail of the distribution is fatter than the right tail, with both tails much thicker than you would expect from a normal distribution. That means that the equivalent modified VAR would be much higher in terms of magnitude, resulting in higher um, expected losses, for example. And that leads us to calculate the modified VRZ stat, which is a transformation of a conventional Z statistic that you uh, retrieve using the standard normal distribution function. There is a caveat that Favre and Galliano themselves um, mention that this method works well only for satisfactorily high Z stats. For example, they advise against using this for a 90% VAR, and uh, it would work best if you go for a 97.5% confidence interval or even a 99%. Uh, confidence interval. So let's start with 99%. That would lead to a Z stat calculated using norm as INV function of 2.33. And we can use the formula derived by Favre and Galliano to adjust our Z stat for non normality for skewness and courtesies. We first had to add one sixth of Z squared minus one all times by skewness plus 124th times Z stat cubed minus 3Z all times by courtesies and finally minus 1 over 36 times 2 Z stat cubed minus 5Z all times by skewness squared. That gives us a much higher modified VRZ stat of 6.7%, of 6.7, resulting in a modified VR of average return minus sigma 
times the adjusted modified VRZ stat of 4.66%, and that can be used to calculate the modified Sharp ratio. Keep in mind that there are so many different figures that all go by the name modified Sharp ratio. For example, there is the modified Sharp ratio by Israelson that adjusts for negative access returns. This is called modified as it uses the modified VAR in the denominator. So you can avoid confusion by saying that this is the Favre and Galliano modified Sharp ratio. To calculate it, we need to assume some risk free rate. Again, look up the yield of a relevant government bond. We've got it at 1.57% per annum. Calculate the annualized expected return, which can be done using the mu figure we have calculated beforehand. And the modified sharp ratio, finally, would be access return, which is annualized expected return minus the risk for rate, divided by risk for rate minus the modified VAR, which gives a modified sharp of 1.34, meaning that we gain 1.34% of return per 1% of modified VAR, which is our relevant measure of risk. However, can this be further optimized, and what would the optimal uh, modified Sharp ratio portfolio look like? To figure that out, we need to go to Solver. First, we need to specify our task. Our objective function is the modified Sharp in cell R25. We want to maximize by changing our portfolio weights and the only constraint being that the sum of weights is equal to 1. We'll leave this box ticked, as we don't want to do any short selling. Untick it if you do. And we can click Solve, optimizing our modified sharp ratio and increasing it to above 2. And our portfolio here would be roughly 50-50, stocks and treasury bonds, which is a very heuristically um, sound portfolio. You have got individual investors or even institutional investors that are on the less sophisticated side that would have such an asset allocation. What would happen though if our confidence interval is more rigid, if it's 99.9% uh, modified VAR? Let's check. Click and solve once again. We would have a considerably higher exposure in gold and much lower exposures to stocks and treasury bonds. Reflecting the fact that gold has uh, less of the higher moments behavior that the modified VR might dislike in terms of skewness and courtesies. If, on the other hand, we reduce the confidence interval to 95%, now our investor would be less risk averse effectively, our portfolio would change with over 75% in large stocks and none in bonds. And that uh, reflects a very natural um, dimension to the modified sharp ratio with modified VAR that it can be used to model investors with varying risk aversion by changing the confidence interval in the MVAR calculations. And that's all there is with regards to the Favre and Galliano modified sharp ratio with modified VAR and its applications to portfolio allocation. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I may to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.